Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely, talented wife, Miss Southern Shell. And we got Tyler over on the board with us, and we're into November, y'all. It's turkey cooking time. That's turkey time. I love it. I start November really, really great because, you know, excited. you cooked a few turkeys already. Y'all know Thanksgiving. That's my jam. I love it. It's, I mean, it's all about, it's all, it's a holiday that's all about eating and being thankful for what you've done this yeah. year and you get to see all your friends and family and hunt. I mean, it's just a great time of year. Egg bowl. Now, egg bowl. We've got the egg bowl. It's football. How awesome is football coming out of October, going into November? And you know, these, I love it. It's just we've been to we've been to several games. We, we, yeah, we were, we've gone to three football games. Yeah, two college, one pro. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good for us. Yeah, to squeeze in in our busy month. But by the you know, another, give me another week of messing with turkeys and talking turkeys, and I'll be sick of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I can I do you, before we get going. I got to give a big shout out to my buddy Kevin down at the butcher shop, Pensacola, Florida. Y'all know, y'all know I get a lot of stuff from him. Well, he sent me a care package, I guess, for the holidays or just for, you know, being a cool guy, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> he sent me two packages of the big turkey breast that I love, and that's so. When you say two, you mean a double pack? Two double packs? No. Or? Well, each one of them's got each turkey has two breasts. Oh, okay. so that makes I've got sense. two packages, yeah. so I got four turkey breast, quadruple. What's your uh, what's um? I don't know. I may end up. I don't know if I'm gonna do. Uh, I know I'm cooking one of them for our Thanksgiving yeah. for the family because my mom and dad and brother and sister in law, everybody loves them. I mean, they are, and it's it's so much. I, I'm not gonna lie. A whole turkey's great. It looks beautiful on Thanksgiving, and everybody wants to see it on a platter. It can't hold a candle to these turkey breasts. I agree. And it's hard to find the big ones. You know, I, I guess. I first saw them like whenever we get a turkey breast from the grocery store, it's the frozen like butterball version. It's a whole turkey breast with a little bit of cavity. I had planned to talk us talk well, about this and oh well, I'm sorry. Ahead. Anyway, ahead. shout out to Kevin. <laughs> we'll get in. We'll get into that turkey breast here in a little bit. But I got turkey. He gave me. I got a brisket, a wagyu brisket. See, I tried to talk you into doing tip. Christmas brisket, and that may happen. For Is my, there anything wrong with Christmas brisket, my, y'all? No. My family would love it. Yeah. Oh yeah, because your family comes and, and hangs out with us Christmas for several days. So yeah, that'd be a great time to do the brisket because they don't ever get to have that. Exactly. So it'd be special because normally I do like the beef tenderloin, but yeah, I mean I may do both. It may just be a beefy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a brisket. So get your gout medicine ready. <laughs> anybody, anybody got gout? Don't come to our house because we're gonna be red meated up. Uh, so you'd cut the pork loin and replace it with the brisket. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. idea. It's in the freezer right and now. It's easy to cook a brisket. I'm cooking kinda. the tri-tip. Probably. Oh yeah, so you got a tri-tip too. I I've, see I've got a little recipe in mind. Holidays, you got to have appetizers, you know, to go with it. So oh, why yeah. not? So how, tell me how this sounds before I do it. Like just imagine you got a cutting board and you got these little bites of like a holiday chimichurri on top of a thin slice perfectly cooked you know, rare, medium, rare piece of tri-tip on a little crostini or something. I'm into that. I think that'd be a great little appetizer, right? Would you put any sort of creamy salve underneath I, the tri-tip? I don't think so. I think the chimichurri is all, because I just different. want the bite of delicious, tender, I'm talking Wagyu tri-tip. It yeah. melts in your mouth on its own. That's true. And then do you just need a crostini? Now, maybe, what if you... uh. Would you cheese the crostini a little bit before you set the meat on it, or do you even need that? I don't know about rare beef and cheese. Yeah. They don't have I was just thinking like a Parmesan crisp and crostini or something like that. You know how you can bake? Oh, yeah. Bake a little maybe now, Parmesan. Parmesan I could bake. Yeah, think. and just where it kind of gets a little coating. It's where the crostini's just not plain, because normally I would just like a little oh. olive oil drizzle, a little seasoning, but I was thinking a little parm on them. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're actually putting it, like, almost baking it on your crostini or something yeah, along those lines. the that, cheese, yeah. where it kind of gets like a little crackery crust on top of the, you know, on top of the no, crostini. No, that's a good idea. Maybe season a little Parmesan and sprinkle it on and yeah. let it toast. I think that'd be pretty good. Yeah. And then, I'm on to something there. I'm gonna, I am gonna. want that to be one of our, it'll probably be a short, 
like a TikTok or YouTube short or something for Facebook or something like that. It's not going to be a full-blown YouTube video. I don't know. I feel like it might be. It may. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how my film schedule goes. Because y'all know I get, you know. It's. I, I, it's I, get, I get a little tired of filming <laughs> videos when all them deer is running around out there. <laughs> That's my whole thing. Like You got one more week of me and I, my mind's going to be somewhere else. Yeah. It already it's is. It's going to be down in the woods. I'd <laughs> say next week. <laughs> yeah. Next week's it. Because uh, our rifle season opens not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So, And we are taking the week off Thanksgiving. Yeah, no the, podcast yeah. will be that oh, week. I got to get me some ducks and deer. <laughs> but My we are going to come about back. Bear. You got to do a little bit at, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, though. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I got to do some holiday recipes for the holiday. You, know, yeah. for, you got to do your Christini. I've wanted to do... And we do we usually we usually do another podcast or two before we check out, and we talk do we we don't really talk a whole lot about our New Year's cooking. I think we've mentioned it and stuff, and we usually share a picture every year of my plate. So maybe this year we just need to take the time to video the plate or whatever. Yeah. I've never videoed the plate or making the plate, but I mean cooking big thing. I don't know if it's everywhere or just in the South or what, but you got to have turnip greens, you got to have the black eyed peas, you got to have some pork of some kind. You and like so, pork tail. Yeah, and you got to have cornbread. I mean, I, I, I usually have pork two ways. Speaking of. I need to order that, too. I'm yeah. glad you said that. Speaking of hog tail, uh, if you don't get your, you like a certain kind, and it's called Burgers. Burgers. Burgers yeah. Smokehouse. Burger Smokehouse. They send us catalogs all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. I'll be looking for the next catalog. I hope, was it in the mail, that stack <laughs> of catalogs? I, I didn't even go through them this morning, but there was a stack. I mean, it must be catalog season, because I opened up the mailbox to check the mail before we left work, and it was like crammed in there i mean it was a ton of they must know you order stuff constantly <laughs> like we got us one boy send her everything <laughs> she'll order it <laughs> got one on the hook <laughs> yes so you need to order your burgers spokehouse hog jail before it gets too late like, if, if you kevin, don't order it now it's, yeah you probably if, don't get it do you think Kevin, I've never seen him say anything about a hog gel. I wonder if he has any hog gel down there. That's a good question for him. Because he has all kinds of, he has all kinds of other things like rabbits and. Mm-hmm. I don't know if folks eat it everywhere. I mean, it's got to be. I mean, a regional thing. Yeah. I didn't know about it till I met you. We we always had hog gel for, it's like, that's where yeah. you get your And I grew up luck. country with a K. I don't so. remember. We looked it up. We always look it up. I always get confused, but it's like luck, health, and wealth. Yeah. You got to have some cornbread. Got to have that. Got to have some mac and cheese just for, uh, that's not required. That's just because that's for your blue plate. You get that in in the mayo. <laughs> no, actually, you get that in the peas. <laughs> so we are doing a community giveaway right now. Right now. What is, what do we got going on? It is a, it's pretty easy. You just got to post a picture of your favorite Thanksgiving recipe. It doesn't have to be turkey. It could be cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce. It could be. A dessert, a side, whatever. You just post a picture of your favorite one. Um, and then we're giving away 10 people are getting like a turkey prize pack. Yes, yeah, so we got our Thanksgiving care package. That's going to be meat bags, bird brine, AP seasoning, king craw, hot rub, clear plastic dredge shaker, and a had a barbecue right beanie. Yep. Oh, that's a good little pack. It is. So you'll have it in time to cook your turkey. Cause you got to. Ship it out next week. So where are we on the deadline for buying your turkey? Have you got, have you got it mapped out? Like, is, you need to be buying it. That is a good question. I'm unprepared. I would say this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I would say so, too. It needs to be by next Thursday, depending on the bird. I, actually, I would want it in the refrigerator next Wednesday. If it was me. You would want it in the refrigerator next Wednesday. That's going to give me seven full, full d- seven days. You know what? I may push that to Tuesday because okay. I got to brine it, and I like a two-day brine. So well, you, you can brine in thaw. 24. Sometimes. Yeah, you can brine in 24. But you want to get all the giblets and the neck and all that stuff out. So I like it to be fully thawed, and then I like it to go in the brine. It, I have brined a frozen bird and pulled those out later. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, if you want to get signed up for our community giveaway, um, go on to Let's Get ki- let's to get to Cooking. Let's leave a comment on that post with your favorite Thanksgiving picture, and we're randomly going to pick 10 people. How about it now? You have till November 14th at 8.59 a.m. Central Standard Time. <laughs> till when? Uh, November, November 14th. Yeah. Oh, y'all are throwing. That's, what's today, the 8th? Oh, we're recording this on the 8th. Yeah. Well, 
Like it ain't very many more days. <laughs> I know. Y'all so better you buy get... your turkey this weekend. That's all I'm saying. We need to make a post about that. Like a PSA. Uh, yeah, PSA. <laughs> buy that turkey. Buy your turkey. They're going to think we're trying to like sway the turkey. <laughs> we really should have some uh, stock in the turkey industry. <laughs> you only need it like temporary. It's like short stock or something. <laughs> yeah. You go buy this and you go keep it for this time and then you go dump it. You got to sell it high. Because this is where they're going to get all their sales, and then that's it. What do you think the turkey people do the rest of the year? Just turn it into deli meat or something? Oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, I'm, I imagine they're stockpiling. Yeah. I mean, I guess don't they do you sell think a lot some of, of those birds have been frozen for months? Uh, I don't know. Probably, because I don't know. I don't know how long. It's, do you think they wait and process all those birds like imagine, a month before imagine it's like October? Ox, August, September. I don't know. Maybe we need to find somebody in the turkey industry that can talk turkey to us. Because I've just assumed that they start killing them, like, in May and yeah. are just freezing them. I mean, I, you know, so there's turkey year-round. I mean, people use ground turkey a lot. It's healthier, and you oh. see it. But, I mean, Come on. how often, how often, I mean, if... Aside from sandwich meat. Really? I would say most of it's yeah. bought sandwich meat, wouldn't you? Yeah. I don't cook a lot of ground turkey. It's probably better for me than ground beef, but... We do, but it depends on, like, what you're cooking it in. Because, like, ta- ground turkey tacos, like, that kind of stuff, not a huge fan of, but... Yeah. We've just, done turkey uh, spaghetti. Yeah. It's okay. Spa- something with a lot of flavor, usually like chili. Like we've made a ground turkey chili that's pretty good. So, Same thing with deer. It's harder <laughs> to make. Nah, you're wrong about that. Deer's <laughs> all, deer goes substitutes well for any of that stuff. But yeah, nobody's buying turkeys outside of. Whole turkey. Yeah. And how many do you think they sell? That's probably something you can Google. How many turkeys are sold on average in a Thanksgiving season? How many turkeys are sold in Thanksgiving? What's your over under, t- Tyler? Okay, this is I got a number per the uh, USDA. Yeah, whole turkey. Do we want to guess? Uh, give me a number. Hundred million. Oh wow, you! <laughs> it's half that. Forty six million. Okay. I was thinking, I would have guessed like five. <laughs> well, I was just thinking number of people, yeah. how many households. But yeah, a lot of the households are four, so that would have been that would have made more sense. Yeah. Off my hundred. Yeah. I'd have been that's not bad though. That's a lot of turkey. The United States produced more than five billion pounds of turkey last year, with more than four point eight billion pounds of that meat being consumed domestically. That's a lot and, of bird. Yeah, that's a, five billion pounds of turkey? crazy i can't even you know think about how much that is so anyway what kind of turkeys there's a couple options when you're picking your turkey out speaking of turkeys yeah speaking of turkey um you got the whole turkeys you got your turkey breasts that are bone in you got your turkey breasts that are boneless then you got them knit jetted turkey breasts i guess those are still turkey breasts right yeah they're so what's the difference between the net jetted one and the ones you get from Kevin at the butcher Jet-netted. shop? Jet netted. <laughs> I like the way you say it though. Uh, so, I mean, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, what yeah. they so all they've done are those is they took two. They took usually they take two turkey breasts off, put them together, and put the skin back on them, and shoot them through this tube that has the net on the end, and it puts them back together. So and they call it most of the time if you look at that, it's called a turkey roast. So it may be one big breast and a tenderloin or whatever it takes to get their weight right. They do that. Um, and that's and it just makes it – it's probably easier to cook because it's boneless and then you're supposed to take the net off and slice it and then you got this, you know, slice it. You cook turkey. it with the net on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, stay a lot of people do. Now, when I do – I've done videos on them where I take the net off and wrap it in bacon. Yeah. But they're meant to cook it with the net on. And if you've ever seen, like, pictures of, say, in, in these catalogs that sell turkey for – thanksgiving or whatever bell order stuff and they'll show and it's always got that pretty turkey and it's look has that grid pattern on it where mm-hmm. they've smoked it and the skin looks beautiful that's because it was netted that's what does that so the net it's actually not bad it holds it together you know yeah so you can cook with that net on it yeah yeah it's butcher twine that's all it is so it's no different than cooking with butcher twine tying up a leg or something or around a roast of pork or a beef loin or something and so. you've also done the turkey breasts that are bone in yeah, those are the ones I was talking about earlier where they come, they usually come froze just like a big turkey, and all they did was cut the back section off to where you still get some of the cavity, but it doesn't have the leg quarters and it doesn't have the wings on it. It's just that center breast portion 
bony end, still got the backbone on it. So it's basically they just lopped off the wings and thighs. And the, and the leg quarters. And the legs. Cut the leg quarters off, cut the wings off, and then they, there you go. And they're okay, but my problem with cooking those is they don't like to set up right. Yeah. They'll fi- I mean, you got to kind of prop them up or either um, spatchcock them out. That, that's a great way to do that. But they're good, but, I mean, a lot of people don't like dark meat turkey. I, I personally like it smoked. You give me a, a roasted or a deep fried, I'm not touching the dark meat. It's not good at all. It's just not. I mean, that's why some people don't want to, they don't want to cook the dark meat. So that's why they cook those. And they're, I really don't know if they're cheaper. It's probably still cheaper to buy the whole turkey and cut it like that yourself. And then you got wings and leg quarters to make your dressing or your stock with or whatever you want to do. You can do something else with it. I still think it cooks better and tastes better cooking it whole. Yeah, it does. It's like anything. Lop it off. Yeah, lop it off when it's done. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Bring it to the table all pretty and then, you know, and then just just start start the the breast. breast. Yeah. 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 But you know, it's it's always hard for me to carve up the dark meat. I, I mean, I can I can cut the breast off and slice it up, make pretty slices. But when you get to the dark meat, I mean, what are you going to do to a leg? I mean, usually I just set the legs on the platter whole, and then the thighs. You ended up just you end up hacking it off. There's really not a great way to get slices out of a out of a thigh, a turkey thigh. So it just comes off in pieces, or it ends up like pulled like pulled turkey kind of, which is not bad. But uh, and smoked, it's good. Yeah, but. Kind of has a ham like taste to me when you smoke it. It does. It's the dark got that meat does. Hammy. The breast doesn't, but the dark meat does. But when you deep fry, that dark meat gets super dark. Uh, it gets dark and dry. It gets <laughs> yeah. darker. But you know, so when when you smoke a turkey, the dark meat you don't. I mean, yeah, it's dark meat. It's a different color than the breast, but it's not this dark looking gray. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. And that's not appetizing to me at all. And that's what happens when you. Deep fry one or you roast it, it's like the dark meat gets darker. And I can't I don't I don't dig on that at all. What's the darkest meat you've ever eaten? The darkest white meat you've ever eaten. I don't turkey. Probably so. Probably roasted turkey. I don't know who thinks like oh oven roasted turkey legs good. It ain't good at all. I mean, I don't really think fried turkeys are that good. The skin yeah, skins because it's seasoned and everything. Yeah, delicious. Is it worth the trouble? No, but it's all there's no, typically no flavor on the inside. It's just it's just not that good. Yeah, you get a good crust on. So it, okay, so. you did do that one where you smoked it and then deep that had fried that, it. that one has a lot of meat. But it, once again, is it worth? The, is the juice worth the squeeze? Yeah, it's more trouble than it's worth firing up all that grease and deep frying it after you've already smoked it. Because when you smoke one, it's about done to perfection. It's got so much more flavor. So you much like more turkey? <laughs> like, yeah. when, you, when you think, they, I mean, I know everybody thinks turkey when you talk Thanksgiving. But do you actually like, like, is that something you look forward to on hey, Thanksgiving is the turkey? Because no. it's not no. me. I'm going no. for the carbs uh, yeah. and the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for. Man. Now, I like dressing. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I like dressing. I like the gravy, that you know, giblet gravy that goes on dressing. And I like ham. Ham's my favorite. Mm. I'm not that big of a fan of ham, but the way you cook them, the smoked hams are knock any other ham yeah. out of the park. Yeah. But you give me the sweet tater cat, deviled eggs. Oh. Like I could show up to Thanksgiving dinner and they're like, hey guys, the turkey got room. We have all the sides though. I'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I could do, I could do a full tur- uh, Thanksgiving dinner with, with none of the meats. Even have the all ham? Sides. That's tough. You know what I like about the ham? Is the after Thanksgiving ham and little bit, you know, when you got the rolls, you left over rolls, left cold ham and cold rolls. Love that. You just grab a slice of ham yeah, out of the bag, it, it's in the refrigerator, in a Ziploc bag. You got a roll that's been in a Ziploc bag on the counter, and you bust that open and go get you a piece of ham and just go about your business. Do you butter the roll and heat oh, it up no. a little bit before you put it in there? No, I, you know what I'll I do? Try that. Put me a big old dollop of blue plate on it. <laughs> Best mayonnaise in the world. Real mayonnaise since. 1927. What's their new hashtag, Tyler? Hashtag, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Because they said that's what people say when they blue plate, and I agree. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> oh, that's the that's good stuff. That's the good stuff. stuff. Shell says it all the time. That's the good stuff. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will now. You usually turn your back. To the- <laughs> like, the, like, the, like there's a crowd of people watching you lick that spoon. It ought to be Spoon Lickers Unite. Well, I hashtag get, Spoon Licker. <laughs> I get so much hate when I lick a you sh- as as you should. Too. Ask Austin. Like as soon as you get out of here, go ask Austin. Every single time I whip out any kind of the man at blue plate, I always get ridiculed. 
every time. <laughs> every time I make a sandwich in front of Michael, he's like, you're going to lick that knife, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> he can't stand it either. <laughs> it is disgusting. <laughs> as good, as much as I like blue plate on stuff, like, it, hey, it flat goes with ham and turkey. You yeah. tell me it doesn't. You tell me. There's oh. no way mustard's better on a ham or turkey sandwich. Turkey needs it, it so much. Yeah, yeah. Turkey definitely needs it. There's just certain well, stuff you got to have it with, but straight off a spoon is not one way to eat mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you ever put the turkey on the roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And do turkey sandwiches? Not the dark meat. <laughs> yeah. The, the. And I definitely put mayonnaise on it. What, what's your favorite uh, Thanksgiving leftover? Like, what do you look forward to having? The ham, the the ham and the rolls. Course. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's the number one. The rest of it, you know, I'm not a huge leftover guy. You're not. I mean, it's like I'm ready to go into the next thing. Like, you know, but it's usually time for the egg bowl. And we're, you know, I, deviled eggs. I'll eat a cold deviled egg out of the refrigerator. How long leftover. have they been in? At uh, what point? A day two max. Because <laughs> yeah, right. they get to a point where that outside egg starts changing textures and gets all wet. We yeah. Never, and I can't stand that. We never have leftover deviled eggs. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. We usually, we usually have a few. I look forward to the stuffing because I always feel like it's better the next day. Really? Like, warm it up with some butter and stuff. Yeah. And, like I don't know. It just like has time to sit, I guess. And, yeah, I'm just not. I'm not so a, is your stuffing a cornbread based? No, it's just bread. So yeah, you okay. know it's... Oh, Boston Tyler here. Like, he looks weird to the stuffing. We don't even have stuffing, Tyler. We love stuffing. I mean, what so is t- There's two different ways dressing, we could man, go with dressing. this. My wife's family makes stovetop, and that yeah. is their, like, and that's, and it's really good. Like, I am a huge stovetop guy. I You're losing, so losing much. cred. <laughs> Just keep talking. I ate so much stovetop when I was in college. Like, oh, yeah. It was a meal. Right with me, the ramen noodles. Yeah. Because. <laughs> me and my roommate would make a box and split it for dinner. Stove top. Would you eat it with like chicken or anything? Oh no, just, you just, just stuff it. <laughs> we split them up. Saudi, sodium salty <laughs> salty croutons, pretty much, and chicken broth and, and poultry seasoning. That's literally what we ate That's for dinner it. last night. Yeah. <laughs> like really? we had we had stove top chicken and uh, yeah. green beans. But uh, yeah. anyways, so That's that well balanced meal, right? Yeah. There. It is <laughs> so super good. But the year hero on the green beans it was delicious. Um, so the other my my family. Just make stuffing with bread, so, uh, it's like a Italian sausage, just kind of crumbled up and stuff. And there's a couple. Of, my mom has a recipe for it, but yeah, like that's my favorite because that's what I grew up eating, you know. But stovetop is I will not turn my nose to stovetop. Um, you you've made one that has sausage. You actually put mm-hmm. sausage in there. That one was one of the really best good. ones. Yeah. yeah, for a stuffing. Yeah, but it wasn't stuffing. I thought it was actual dressing. You did a sausage dressing. Uh, I think I called that one stuffing. Oh, okay. Did y'all use? Because I use bread. Cr- I use the breadcrumb, like Pepperidge Farm breadcrumbs. Or it's not breadcrumbs. It looks like little squares of of uh, crouton, and then yeah, they rehydrate yeah. with the chicken broth. But did you use like ground breakfast sausage or or Italian? Sausage? I don't think I used Italian. I think I used regular breakfast sausage. Regular. Yeah. You did a sausage sage dressing. That was really good. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. You did do a sausage yeah. and herb stuffing Stuff that you for stuffed a chick, it, for a yeah. Turkey. yeah. But you also did a sausage sage dressing. I think you did that last year, and that it was, was the best stuffing or dressing that I've had in a while. I remember it now. Yeah, that was really really good. Yeah. Have you ever tried oyster dressing? I have never had oyster dressing. I've heard about it. Yeah, it's like a. I've seen it. Thing. Yeah, it's. I figured it was more of Louisiana, is it not? I always thought about it like Low Country. Yeah. Okay. Maybe so. South yeah. Carolina, Georgia, somewhere yeah. over there. I've never had it though. I don't. Would you try it? I would try it. I'm there but, for it. But yeah. I just don't see. To me, the oysters when you cook them long enough to cook that dressing, when you overcook oysters, they get it's going to be like little balls of I don't know gummy drops or something in there. But you know that you don't have you don't keep that creamy soft super texture of that an oyster is supposed to have. Yeah. When you cook it and you bake it and something like that, because even when you like Rockefeller one or Chargrill one, you it know the, takes, the texture starts changing on them. You cook them too long, they're not good. They're rubbery. So I I would rather have my oysters ice cold on the side, <laughs> and then have my dressing. But I, what I think would be good now is like shrimp dressing or crawfish dressing or Ooh, crab dressing, dressing or maybe we just need to do a seafood dressing because it reminds me of you've had stuffed crabs. They stuff them with like a cornbread mm-hmm. type mixture. Mm-hmm. That's that's basically a dressing they're putting in there. And we could take that to a whole other level. And I've never done it, but that might, maybe that's one I need to do is a seafood dressing. 
I could see all of that shrimp, crawfish, and crab being great in one. I could definitely see crawfish. To me, that just seems like it would go, go with perfect. It, yeah. yeah. The crab meat could not be bad. And you get some good lump blue crab meat in a dressing. But the I only feel problem like you're is wasting, you're wasting your delicious crab. Yeah, when you put dressing. it in there, maybe it's just the essence of you need in it because yeah. that's another thing. Once again, seafood's so delicate, and it's better when it's you know cooked just perfect, not overcooked. And anytime you've got to bake it, it's not changes texture. Which crab's not so bad at doing it. Yeah, shrimp get kind of tough. Yeah, shrimp would get tough. So you I don't know. You'd almost shrimps, have to yeah. dice Chop it, it or something. Or something where you just I'm willing to experiment flavor. with that. Maybe a seafood dressing. We'd have to try it first. Yeah. What did they say? No experiment on Thanksgiving? Yeah, that's right. You don't experiment. That's the one place you come with them 25, 30 year old recipes. So don't you come know. in here. Yeah, don't come in here. You've had to get on to me. Yeah, this is not the time to put eggs and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I've <laughs> never done that. It's like, Whoa. I've seen I'm a TikTok. It's this lady. She is just getting all over somebody, her family, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I have changing up the mac and cheese recipe. You know what it's supposed to be like. Don't come in here with that bull mess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. It's very true. You don't just play with my sweet potatoes, trying to do something crazy to them. I want the crunchy pecan top. I don't want the marshmallows. I want them. <laughs> <laughs> so back to turkeys. You buy them. You're saying go ahead and buy them. Whenever yes. you see them, go I, ahead and get them. Get them now. Get them this week, this how weekend. You, how are you going to thaw it? You know, I wouldn't be scared. To, I'd probably keep it froze to about Monday, Tuesday, and then it would hit the oh, refrigerator. so it's got to be in the freezer. Yeah, I would yeah. buy them. Yeah. They're going to be froze. I'm, I'm not, you know, we just don't see. Now, if you're in a place where, they, where it's easy to get a fresh turkey, or you're willing to pay the extra money to get a fresh, never thought uh, Have you ever cooked froze? a fresh turkey? I don't even know if I've ever, I've never bought one. Yeah, a aside from turkey. like a. A wild turkey. <laughs> yeah, except for, yeah, we cut it up. We cut them up and deep fry them. We don't yeah. cook them whole. But yeah, I don't. I mean, just about every turkey we see is already froze. Y'all know where they are. The big bin of them this time of year in the supermarket. They probably got a sixteen foot deep freeze with them in there. You know, right out in the middle of the aisle right now. But I go. I mean, do you want to buy the young had tender one? Problem I mean, finding one. Only early, because okay. you know. We do our recipe. We do our turkey recipes. We have to do them in like October. So sometimes it's hard. They don't have them in store. Now this year, uh, Walmart um, already yeah. had some turkeys in there. I don't know if Kroger did or they not. They didn't. When we were looking, but, we had to go to Walmart. I think it was last year, or the year before. You ended up having to order some online and yeah, pay like Costco. It was like forty five, fifty bucks a turkey. I mean, I mean usually a turkey's pretty cheap. You can get one for about fifteen, twenty bucks, something like that. But we gave like forty five, fifty bucks because we had to get them from Costco and have them shipped. But they were froze. Yeah. But I just don't think it's worth that extra money to buy one. For, I mean, maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe I need to try to find one. I don't even know where you get one around here. But I buy them froze. And I, you know, keep them in the freezer until it's time to thaw them out. I'm usually going to give myself a week before I'm going to brine it. There's a chart. And I know we posted it last year. Yeah, we made one. Uh, yeah. We made one about, like, depending on the size of the turkey, when you need to take it out, how long it takes it to thaw. I'll make sure but, they post that this week. Yep. Yeah, but mine go usually. Up, I've got a big bowl. It's like one of your big Tupperware, or it's not a Tupperware. It's just a hard plastic bowl. Mm -hmm. It's actually like a Rachel Ray garbage bowl. Is or it something. Really? That's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. Well, a, a ten to twelve pound turkey, or, a, or actually, I should say twelve to fourteen pound turkey. That's usually about what I buy. <laughs> Have you seen those TikToks about it's the popcorn throw up bowl, <laughs> popcorn slash throw up bowl? <laughs> Who throws up a bowl? I mean, in rare cases, but you just like when it, you're a little kid. Oh, yeah. it's your sick bowl. Yeah, yeah. sick bowl. That then you good. wash it out and use it for popcorn. No, you don't. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's disgusting. What somebody throws in it up in it is it's done. gone. Yeah, you just chalk that one up. It goes in the bin outside the dumpster. I know. Let that kid throw yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to buy another bowl. Fan. I can go to Walmart and get another bowl. <laughs> I'm just going to play it the fifth because I've been roasted enough in the last couple episodes. <laughs> uh, you, you can talk about the throw-up bowl. Yeah, we had <laughs> throw up man. bowl and hold it sometimes. He's got little kids still. There. We, would, yeah. we would use pans growing up, and Mom would put like a little water like in the bottom. Like spaghetti pan? Oh, yeah. And so that wasn't getting thrown away. <laughs> I've got it. My friend Vic, he pretty still, every time I see him, reminds me of his pan incident i had it was his favorite spaghetti pot and you weren't a small child oh no i was full grown <laughs> i was 14 flaming dr peppers in and blackout that's one of the times where I had a life-changing moment after that <laughs> <laughs> 
You used one of them nine lives on that one. <laughs> that was a bad day. I think I got slapped and kicked and ended up hanging off of somebody's couch with my head in a spaghetti pot. <laughs> Still made it to work, though. <laughs> That was a rough day. Yeah, but I thought you telling on myself now. early out and then just oh yeah I did uh, <laughs> and then went back to the casino and kept drinking uh, boot and rally man <laughs> when you're young you can do stuff like that okay so Brian so that turkey's thawed out I've let it slow thaw okay we- here's the question you buy the turkey you put it in there it's gone four days it's time to brine why can't you put that turkey in the brine? As the, as part of the thawing process, I mean, I have done it just because I ran out of time and I had to get another turkey cooked or whatever. I think for the absolute best turkey, you want to slow thaw it, and then you want to brine it. So it just it just does better for the meat. I mean, could you thaw that turkey like take it and bust it? For one, it's hard to get out of the package. But could you do it if you can get it out of the package or get it thawed enough to get out of the package? Go ahead and get it in the brine. Yeah, you absolutely could. Could you brine it with um, the giblets inside? <laughs> you could. I've done it. I've done it accidentally. And don't do it on purpose. Why would you want to? If you couldn't get it I out. Mean, yeah, if you couldn't get it out because it was so froze. But you're going to add more moisture to your brine. It's probably going to dilute it some. It, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the studies on them, but it probably needs to stay in the brine longer to uptake the seasonings and to get that kind of reaction happening where you want it to even out and make a really moist turkey but so you could do it but it's you not could the best it's not method. i mean you yeah i mean there's a lot of like you can thaw one in a sink and in, in water dripping but is it advised no it's absolutely not i mean i've thought them in a no joke i've thought them in a bathtub before we were doing a big turkey cook and we had all these frozen turkeys that we were having to cook that night you had to figure out a way to get them thawed a jacuzzi bathtub circulating that water will thaw a turkey pretty quick. Is it? I mean, it ain't recommended at all, but it will do it. I mean, yeah. But the main thing is, give yourself plenty of time. There's no use in rushing doing it. I mean, if you if you do a little pre plan, that's where it makes your turkey good. I mean, you got to have a good technique to cook it. But all this buying it early, slow thawing it, then brining it, it's gonna be better. So. Moral of the story is to cook a really great bird, you need to start thinking about it two weeks ahead. That's right. That's why we're talking about it here first part of November, you know. So when you brine it, does it matter what seasonings, what liquid? Do you have I, any like hard I mean, so what matters is salt and sugar and water. That's that's the main part of a brine that matters. You've got to have a ratio of salt, sugar, and amount of water to make that reaction that osmosis happened or it's trying to equal out that concentration uh, concentration of flavor. And that's what, that's what it's doing. You know, it's trying to pull salt in, take salt or pull the shove of the sugars going in. It's just working on the outside of it, but it's also working on the inside of the meat, which is making it moist and, and adding seasonings to that. Those go along with that salt and sugar solution as they're going through the meat, working their way in. And it's all trying to stabilize. So it's not like it's going to make it, Super salty so or super sugary. More no, it's going to even the, the 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 you're putting it in a high high rated solution on the outside when you drop it down in there. That's all in the water. That's in your medium, and then you're dropping this big piece of meat in there. And so some of that's wanting to go in there to stabilize what's on the inside of that meat versus what's on the outside. So it's not going to make it like too sweet or too salty or too seasoned or anything like that. But it's going to be evenly distributed. The um, over that rate of time and you keep it in there. And do, do you gain anything by keeping it in there longer? No, but it needs 12 to 48 hours. That's kind of optimal. I mean, so, it won't happen like in the smaller the piece of meat, the less dense, the faster it happens. So if you drop pork chops in a brine, it's going to happen in four to six hours or, you know, something. Yeah, you, yeah. So the bigger the piece of meat, the longer it takes for it to all work through the meat and even out. What would happen if you put like a 12 to you like the 12 to 14 pounders. Yeah. What it happens if you put that in a brine and leave it in there for four days? It's probably, I mean, it's just going to get to a certain point where that's all it's going to be. Okay. It's not I mean, going to, okay. Yeah. It's not going to cure it or anything like that. That's just, that's just what's going to happen. So, I mean, you, you could, you're not gaining anything from it. Um, if anything, you might be risking contamination because maybe the temperature is you're not holding it cool enough or something like that. So, well, if you got in a fridge. But most of the time, you don't have to worry about it. Um, Just give yourself 48, for two days is perfect. perfect. You don't need any more than two days. And one day, 24 hours is really is optimal too. So, if that makes sense, that's optimal. At least 24, 
48 is about as much as you need to go. These turkey breasts that you're cooking for Thanksgiving, are you going to brine them at all? Usually the turkey breasts from Kevin, I don't, I don't brine them. Do you inject them? Um, I have injected them, but they're so good on their own. You like, see, you don't them. even have to. I season them. Yeah. I wrap them in butter. I usually them season them, smoke them a little bit, and then wrap them in butter, and then they just hang out in that butter. And when you slice them, you can just, the juice just oozes out of them. So you don't really have to. And, and since they're off the bone, they're boneless. To me, when you're trying to inject something or, you know, it, it, it just doesn't hold it as well. So, yeah. But I mean, you can. Could I've, I've injected them. I didn't think it was worth the worth it. No. They didn't need it. Yeah. So talking about injections, what? When do you inject? What do you inject with? So after, I, and this is probably up for debate, and a lot of people probably say it's overkill, or you don't have to brine them, or if you're gonna, you know, you don't have to inject it if you're gonna brine it. You don't have to brine it if you're going to inject it. Oh, this is true. If you don't want, you don't have to do anything to it. These most of these turkeys, though, especially the ones that I'm talking about that I buy at my grocery store, they're already enhanced with like a salt solution anyway. And so, I mean, is, is it that going to stop you from doing? No, it's not going to stop me from brining it. It's not going to stop me from injecting it. I'm doing it all. I'm going to brine it for two days, and then I'm still going to inject it because so. The injection part is about putting more flavor. So turkey is, y'all know, it's flat tasting as it can be. Bland. Doesn't have a lot Bland of flavor. Bland. So it can, but it, but it's a sponge. It can take a lot of stuff. You can take it just about any direction you want. And so the brine kind of gives the meat flavor and moisture. You know, it makes the cells in the meat hold more moisture, and you get some of the flavor in it. Is it super strong? No, it's not super strong, but it's it's better than just that enhanced bird coming right out of the wrapper. And then when you inject it. I'm usually putting a fat, which is mo- more of the time just melted butter. Or if you buy an injection, most of the time it's got that butter oil in it. Yeah. But it's a fat you're putting in there, and it's got some seasonings in it. And most of the time it's got chicken flavor, chicken broth of some sort. That's the liquid they mix with the butter. And so you're putting different than your brine. Your brine's usually some seasonings, the salt, and the sugar, and water. Um, but then the injection is going to be a fat, and then some more flavoring, and then some, some poultry or chicken flavored stuff. That's what's in them. So you're enhancing it. You're you're putting these other flavors in it. That's making it really rich. I look at it that way. The the brine gives it moisture and some flavor, and the injection gives it richness. So and that's so that's basically what it does. I mean, who doesn't like? I mean, they, they both- named a whole turkey brand after putting butter in them. The Butterball. <laughs> I mean, that's just how good it makes it. And that's genius to have that. You know, to say our turkeys are better butter flavored. You know, they're Butterball turkeys. Isn't that, isn't that great? That is pretty good. What do people like with their turkeys? Butter. Yeah, they that's right. That. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I mean, you think you baste in these turkeys. They, they, I, I like basting them with butter, too. It yeah. gives it that pretty golden color. It makes that skin good. makes it crisp up. That's important, too. I don't know if you've got that as a question to ask, but when it comes out of that brine, you've got to take in the drying of the skin, too. Now, do you absolutely have to do it in the refrigerator overnight? No. But if you'll put... Like, you'll take that turkey out of the brine, you'll get most of the moisture off of it as you can and pick any of the little seasonings that were in that, you know, in the brine off of it. Uh, it's not important to get all of them off, but if there's a bunch of big peppercorns and bay leaves and things like that, I get them off. Um, I, I think it's important to put it on a raised rack. Yeah. Because so much, you don't realize how much moisture comes out from the bottom, you know, mm-hmm. until you put it on a raised rack and... Your little yeah. pan is underneath is filled up with water. So and you else? don't get that away from the turkey unless you put it on the That's rack. right. That's yeah. right. And, and it actually allows air to flow between the rack and the pan so the bottom of the skin can start to dry out a little bit too. Yeah. But you want that skin dry because if you want edible, really good skin, you have to get as much moisture off of it as you can. And that's what sitting in the refrigerator and letting the air work on it that's inside the refrigerator, it helps dry that skin out. Then you can come back and put a fat on the skin. And that's usually, I mean, it can be as simple as cooking spray. You could oil it up. You could put butter, melted butter on it. I don't like to do the melted butter as much on it because it coagulates so fast. Yeah, it does. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't look like it cooks as even. So usually I just use a pan we did spray. That, we did that one time. We used melted butter. We were covering this yeah. nice, pretty turkey. That was cold yeah. with melted butter, and it just goes to just clumpy and right clay. Up. Yeah, it doesn't look good at all. Now, it melts out pretty quick, yeah. and, you know, but it, but the whole thing on that is is that butter helps that skin brown up. It helps it actually get crispy. I mean, it kind of gets hot, and it makes it sizzle. I mean, 
man, that's what gets it crispy. But then it also helps your seasoning stick when you're going to season it. Um, okay. So I just had this crazy idea. So we kind of do the same method for chicken wings, right? Right. We dry them out. We try to get them as dry as possible. And then we add some sort of fat. But we ha- we have used like a baking powder or something. Baking, to crisp it up? Oh, yeah. like uh, Could you use that for a turkey? You probably could. You, I don't say I've never tried it. Yeah. But um, it would give it more of a... You know how when you put that cornstarch on there and it kind of gives it a little more texture, like it's almost fried, it would probably give it that texture. That's a, that's a good little experiment yeah. to run. Maybe I've never mix done it, it with like your seasoning, mix a little cornstarch or something. Just to give seasoning. it a little crustier crunch, it would definitely give it a crunch. You just have to watch it when you're using that because um, it can get overpowering. Gritty. Yeah, it yeah. can get a little gritty if you use too much of it. So you got to watch how much of that you use in it. But it would definitely give it a little more crunch. That's a something we might need to yeah, experiment, experiment with. Yeah. So once you got it dry, you got this turkey dry. How long, if you're in a hurry, how long do you need to let it dry? About an hour. An hour. In a hurry. Yeah. I mean, pepper towel, usually what I'll go grab pepper towel, start soaking it up, put a wad of them up in the cavity, try to absorb all that moisture up. You're not going to get that cavity super dry, but that's okay. That's okay. You don't get as much of it out as you can. But the skin is where you really want to concentrate. Even the creases, the legs, all the all the pieces of it, you want to take pepper towel and soak it up. And that's when you can put it in the fridge and let it really air dry, or you can just an hour. Yeah. Do you then see, you're ready to inject. Do you think it's worth taking the time to put it on the rack, put it in the fridge, and let it dry overnight? Yes. If you have the yeah, time. Yeah, if you have the time. you do. It, it makes a better skin. Simply put, if you're worried about the skin and the look of it, do that. Makes a better skin. So what do you do? You pull it out of the – it's dry. It's ready to go. What's next? Usually I go ahead and inject it because my injection's got that fat in it. So if it gets on the skin, I can still take pepper towel. And I do. When I, once I inject it now, you try to go in the breast and try – you, you want to keep it even pretty much. I usually mix up about two cups of liquid, you know, whatever I'm – like a cup of melted butter, a cup of chicken broth. I usually throw some hot sauce in there, maybe a why little you, seasoning, but I don't get carried away with the Why seasoning. do you – um? Do hot sauce and Cajun seasonings and turkeys a lot. I just like it. You just like it. That's my preferred preferred turkey. I've never tried I, one of those turkeys and been like, I can taste the heat or the hot. No, sauce you don't get it. But like it has that, a, just. Yeah. I think it's it's more of the vinegar and a little bit of the cayenneness of the hot sauce. So it's not hot by any means. And you never know. Like when you slice a turkey, you never know there's any hot sauce in it. Oh no! It's not yeah. like it's bright red. Like I'm shooting it up with Frank's or something <laughs> yeah. like that. You know, or Tabasco. <laughs> It's just it just gives it a little more, and you, could you omit it? Yeah, you can take that and make it your own. You could just use chicken broth and butter. You don't have to put anything else in it. But usually, I'll hit it with a little AP or a little King Crawl or some kind of Cajun seasoning. Mm-hmm. I just like the Cajun bird. Like it probably goes from me going back to I mean, everybody knows the old Tony's Creole butter. That's what I. That's what all that butter and chicken broth and that is is my version of Creole butter. I just like that. I think it's a good one. Now, but I'm sure Tony's in real butter. It's probably <laughs> that artificial stuff. What's that stuff y'all use on the like um, whirl butter? Whirl butter. <laughs> yeah, 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 like for the flat tops. Yeah, it's probably what it is. It's a butter oil, butter flavored oil. Probably not good for you at all. Real <laughs> butter's good. It's great for you. <laughs> Don't believe the hype. The real fats are good for you. So, what are you seasoning your turkey with? Um, if I want, so once I get it injected. I wipe it back down, and then I go ahead and stuff the cavity. And use I don't we don't cook our stove top in the bird, Tyler. Oh, do y'all put your <laughs> stuffing in the bird when you cook it, or do you no. still cook it on the side? We just cook it on the oh. side, just like I don't know. I'm weird about that. Yeah. So somebody, well, growing up, did, did that was the stuffing in the bird. My dad it? stuffs the bird. My mom does not yeah. stuff the bird. So, so I put. So somebody asked, "Is it okay?" Um, they they wanted to know, "Is it okay to stuff and smoke the turkey?" Yeah, you can. But here's my problem with it. Does it work? Yes, absolutely. But you have to get that stuff. Anything you stuff it with, you have to make sure you're taking that internal temperature, and it has to get to above 165, or you're going to risk contamination from the juices inside that turkey. What if you don't eat it? <laughs> oh, you just doing it to do it? Yeah, yeah like that flavor. Yeah, yeah you okay. could. If you, I mean, yeah, definitely. You could do that. No, but I, I still just wouldn't. I don't like it because to get that to 165 in that stuffing, you're going to nuke the breast. They're probably going to be 175, 180. And I like to pull mine off at 160 and let them carry to 165. So I just, I don't trust it. 
And that's why I don't, and I don't want to dig stuff. I don't want my dressing up digging it out of the cavity and eating it like that. Get a big spoon going. Can you do it? You absolutely can. But um, I like using vegetables, like root vegetables, like onions, maybe some celery, uh, some citrus, like some lemons. I put apples in it, uh, herbs. Like you can buy the poultry bundle from your grocery store. It usually comes in those little plastic, uh, I forget what kind of pack they call it. It's like a clam shell. Clam shell. And it'll have sage and thyme and rosemary and parsley. Those are great to put in there. You can put whole cloves of garlic. Anything that you want, you can put in there. But you, the, the ideal is to take up mass inside the cavity to help the bird cook even. It's going to slow the breast down a little bit. Um, it's going to give you some flavor because that stuff is going to heat up. And as moisture cooks out of the onion, all the vegetables, everything that's in there is going to release moisture. And that's going to go into the bird somewhat. I mean, is it going to be overly strong? No. But it's so much better to add something in there than to have just a void. So that's that's the whole thinking with, with putting something in it. And then you usually tie the legs up. And at that point, you're ready to season. You so you got, get it all tied up in a nice, pretty package. Yeah, tuck the wings back behind the head. I like them to lay back. Well, you know, he's kind of like this right yeah, here. Yeah. Just lay back like he's getting a suntan. <laughs> but you just take those tips and put them back behind the head. And then it'll, it'll lay good. A lot of times I'll put it on a rack at this point. Or I'll get me a helper. Because I like to spray it with cooking spray or get some oil on the skin. Get it ready for seasoning, and then when you season it, I like to put a little on the back, so you got to flip the bird over. And you if somebody not do that one handed. One handed, you can't you can't handle a big turkey like that. And what? Because you got to yeah. season with yep. the other side. You can't and... do it. So you really need to you need another set of hands. So often, I, she'll glove up. Yeah. Or I'll glove up and, sh- and she'll season, but vice versa. And you'll so you hold the bird over and season his back, lay him on the rack. No, actually, you before you lay him down, you got to rotate stuff. and get the sides because it's so hard when he's laying there you gotta to season the in. sides. Yeah, he needs to be rotated. That's that's what I'm getting at. You got to twist him kind of. So you want to get each side, then put him down, back down, and then get the top. But you're not going too heavy. Now for um, that classic, well, I always we always called it the Norman the Norman Rockwell in one of our videos we did. But if you think about those classic images where it shows the family at the table. The big turkey, the dad at the end fixing to carve it up, and it's just this golden, real pretty bird that was guaranteed cooked in an oven, you know. But that's the look I'm going for, and so you can't do that with colored seasonings. Uh, you can do it like simple. Um, I do it two ways, either granulated garlic mixed with poultry seasoning and or either just like AP salt, pepper, and garlic. And then it may, But it makes a real pretty do color on the outside. Do you add salt to that? Garlic and poultry seasoning at no, all? No, usually I don't. Okay, so it's no, wait, no, wait. You're right. You're right. It's it's a uh, so when You've I did got a it, recipe. Yeah, I've got it, but I, I want to say I bought. I always buy it at Sam's, like the tone salt, the tones granulated garlic, and the usually poultry season comes in a little jar from like Kroger. But I would do equal. Uh, it's pretty much equal part part salt and garlic, and then just like a, a little part of poultry season. You don't need like the whole bottle. Like a tablespoon. Yeah. If I did a cup, cup, and a table. But I got a recipe for it. It's been it's been a while since I've done that, since I started doing the AP one. And the AP one's just like a classic seasoning. It's just salt, pepper, and garlic. I always hated when you would um, season the outside of a turkey with like a rub. Like a barbecue or rub or something. Something with color because you can't get it even. Yeah. You got little pits and crevices and it wrinkles. It looks funny. Yeah, yeah. Even Cajun season kind of looks funny when you do it. It tastes good, but it doesn't look as even. I, I agree with you on that. That's why I say stay away from anything colored because it just gets splotchy. And Yeah. If you want it to be the most beautiful and golden brown, oh, you know, you really just need a little salt, pepper, garlic. So when do you spatchcock? Do if, you spatchcock? Do you like to spatchcock? Um, What's your thoughts on spatchcock? If I'm thinking about cooking like, you know, a showpiece turkey, like it's going to be on the table because you're going to carve it there, I want the whole bird. But if it's something I'm just wanting to get it done fast – um, I'm going to cut it up. Nobody's going to see the turkey. I'm spatchcocking it. Because I can cook that spatchcock turkey in two hours, and it cooks super even. Is it the prettiest? No. It's just you know laid out flat. You can get it's more of bad looking. You can get more of them on the grill because they don't have as much height to them. Like, you put two big turkeys, you got to spread your racks out. You're taking up a ton of room. But spatchcock turkeys kind of lay flat, kind of like a brisket flat or something. And so you can, get them, you can get more of them on the grill. I guess it depends on how you're – It depends on your grill. But yeah, yeah. But, I mean, is one better than the other? Not really. What I mean. As far as looks, obviously, the big one Looks, is. is that's the biggest thing and, and time it takes to cook it. You know, it's it's easier to season like, a spatchcock turkey. Yeah, because 
because it's all laid out. It's two sided at that point. <laughs> yeah. It's not four sided. How but long? The back side of a whole turkey really don't matter. It's not like you're eating that back skin or the back. Yeah. Uh, how long do you cook a turkey? Until it's done. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, when I say average time is probably for 12 to 14 pound birds, about three hours, three and a half. Uh, Spatchcock is about two. And I usually always run the pit at 300. I, I'm, I mean, this is one thing. Now, you can say what you want about pellet grills. A pellet grill cooks an awesome turkey. They cook awesome chicken wings, it's too. Not, same concept. Because, yeah. because you can crank that heat up. It cooks high. It cooks even. It's got air moving in it, so the skin does get crispy. Uh, it doesn't over smoke it. You're going to get a smoke flavor, but it's not going to be super smoked. It's not going. Which not, is a good thing for which turkey. Which is a great thing yeah. for turkey. It's just a great way to cook it. I mean, and plus it don't tie up your oven when you're cooking all your sides and everything else you're cooking on Thanksgiving Day. So I'm a that's a I mean that's one of the best things I cook on a pellet grills at whole tur- or turkey. When you cook a ham, what are you cooking it on? Uh, I mean, it I depends cook it on, on what it. grill too. <laughs> 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 but you can cook a ham on anything. Yeah, I, mean, I cook it on the Weber. You know, I, I, I cook it on PK. It doesn't matter. I, I just need some heat because that ham's fully cooked anyway. You're just heating it up. Just heating yeah. it up. Um, so I've got some questions for you from the community. Okay. I'm going to rapid fire ask you. All right. I like the rapid fire. We kind of did this one. If I'm going to smoke a turkey and do a brine, do I need to start the thaw earlier to, to accommodate its time in the brine? Yeah. Ideally. I would, I would say so. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mike asked, I just ordered some boneless turkey breasts. I'm going to smoke them at my house and then take them to my dad's house. How long will I be able to hold them wrapped in full in a cooler? So if they do your method where you smoke and, them, you wrap them with butter, and get yeah. them done. Now, this ain't like – I don't hold me to this because I've never seen how long I can hold a turkey breast. But if they're the size turkey breast I'm getting, the big ones, and they're all wrapped up with the butter, and I've got four of them in a party stacker cooler, which is you know a smaller cooler that's really holding the airspace – I wouldn't be scared for, I would say, four hours easy. I would say four hours easy. Easy. But so, I mean, I wouldn't be worried about that at all. But you could probably get six. Um, but you could easily get two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could go two, no problem. But, yeah. And they'd probably be better. How long a drive does he have? Did it, it didn't say? say. Okay. But I'm sure he would have. Oh, they're going to be better. Yeah. Now, I would take them to 160, and I wouldn't vent them or anything. I would take them off the grill at 160. Put them in that cooler, put the lid. I'd, I'd probably burp that every once in a while. They're going to carry over, but they're going to stay. Oh man, that'd be really good. I mean, we do the, we do it to your mom's house all the time. Yeah, I do. I, yeah, I'd, I'd always put stuff in that cooler and for Thanksgiving, and then we go over there and carve it over there. Even the whole turkeys, I don't wrap them up super tight. Um, so how, what do you do with the whole turkey? You pull a whole turkey off. You got to travel with it. Yeah, I usually. I mean, I put it in a pan. And then I'll loosely put some foil over it, but I usually try to leave it to where anything can escape because my skin is not going to be as good once I put that, once it goes in a cooler. I don't care if you didn't have it wrapped at all. Once you put it in that cooler and it's holding that heat, it's going to change because it's, you got more, so much moisture in there. There's nothing to move the air and get it out. It's just trapped heat, making more because the top, I guarantee the bottom of that cooler will be wet from all the moisture on it. So you're going to, you're going to sacrifice your skin on a whole bird. If you, uh, if you if you the have to meat's transport probably it. gonna be good, right? Yeah, the meat's yeah, the meat oh the meat's gonna be delicious. Yeah. It's gonna be moist and juicy. You're just but not gonna you're, have that you're not gonna have that crispy skin. Like when I take my turkey off for Thanksgiving, I don't put it in a hole. I mean, I let it rest 20, 30 minutes and then it's carving up. It's but it's not getting covered up. It's not. I want it to, I, I I just usually set it out on the counter. Not not outside, inside in the kitchen mm-hmm. and just let it sit there and hang out twenty or thirty minutes. The reason why I do that is because I want that. I want the meat to stay as juicy as possible, and as it's cooked, it's pushed all that moisture out, trying to get out of the bird. And if you let it rest, it'll kind of draw some of that moisture back in it, and it'll be juicier when you go to cut it up. Uh, so Brian asks, anyone split the turkey spatchcock style before brining? Uh, I I would like to do it to save space. You could. I've never done it, but I don't see why you couldn't. I don't know how that would save space. I, I would actually think it might uh, lessen your brine time. You're taking out a big portion of that bird by pulling that backbone out and laying it out. And letting it's got to make it thinner. I mean, you know, you still got some dense more meat. Access, access yeah, to the meat. Yeah. yeah. It would be really easy to do, and you could put it in a better container, probably. What kind of better container? I was just thinking like a square Tupperware, a big square Tupperware yeah, or something yeah. like that. Like something you'd take cupcakes somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> something that would hold it, you know. 
wouldn't take near as much, you know, brine liquid either. Yeah. Because you're going to, I mean, you're still going to get your ratio right, but I would pour how much ever in there it needed to cover it. You can still stick it in a meat bag if you wanted to. So here's a question. Can I use the bird brine as a dry brine? I don't know if that would work on a turkey. I mean, you can't get it even. Where are you going to put it? It needs yeah. to go in the cavity and in the breast. And the- I don't think, I mean, so when I think dry brine, I think of just using like a barbecue rub or a Cajun season or AP or something like that. The, uh, the, the bird brine is such a high concentration of salt and sugar that I don't, I just don't think it would, you would gain the flavor is not going to be that great because it's so strong. You know, you need that water to dilute it down. It's just going to be like putting, if you took, a cup of or a cup of two of salt and some and a cup of sugar yeah. and mix that up and put it all on the outside. It's just going to be salty and you know it's not. It's gonna just going to be on the outside. Yeah, and, it's not and then the good. herbs are like real pieces of herbs, and you got the whole peppercorns. You're not gaining any advantage. The water breaks that down over time, so you get the flavors from all those herbs rehydrating and pulls and it on into there. The yeah, meat. yeah, yeah. So I don't think I, I wouldn't suggest that at all. I would, you know, I'd, I'd go to more use a using a an an all-purpose type seasoning or a Cajun seasoning or your favorite barbecue. I'll tell you a great one I like to dry brine with is Mark's The Swine Life uh, Mississippi Grind. It makes an awesome dry brine. For chicken? For turkey and chicken, uh, yes. Yeah, you put it on there. It makes It's really good. So you're talking about just lightly seasoning it outside and letting it sit? But yeah, I mean, I season it generally. No, uh, yeah. pretty liberally. On a whole turkey? Yeah. Okay. So what is a meat bag? It's a big plastic zip top bag that's super thick think of a ziploc gallon bag on steroids yeah it's, it's thicker it's tougher and it's bigger it's kind of the hulk of ziploc bags perfect for turkeys perfect for turkey perfect for storing meat uh taking it anywhere put it in the refrigerator it contains a mess i got one of those brine buckets it's basically it's like a Five gallon bucket, but it's got this little lid thing you can screw down to hold mm-hmm. stuff down. But that's all it is. It works like a, really well. Yeah, it works great. But to keep that clean, I put one of the meat bags down in it so it acts like a liner. And then I put my turkey in it and put my brine in it. And you can't, it will not leak that way. You're not going to spill it in the refrigerator. It's just, it's ideal. And then it goes right in the refrigerator. And usually what, we take one shelf out in our, in the Miller Lite fridge. <laughs> 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 and then we stick it in there, and it stays in there, and you don't have to worry about temperature changes. If you, if you don't have, like, an extra refrigerator, because most people don't want to take up all the room in their main fridge in a house. Especially and if you only have one fridge, that's okay. Get you a cooler, keep bags of ice in it, and then get you a meat bag and drop your bird and stuff in that and put it in that. And just make sure, like, if, it's, if there's any water getting in it, let the water out and keep ice in it. It'll hold for two days in there, no problem. Um, I will say... A really good tip with that meat bag is put the turkey in there, put your brine in there, and then you can use the Ziploc at the top, but yeah. grab it as close to the water as you can get it and put a zip tie. Yeah, zip uh, uh, Yeah, zip tie. Yeah, put a zip tie there and hold it real tight. Sometimes you put two. That can leak, though. It can, but... If it tumps over. If it tumps over. If it's nestled in a yeah. cooler with some ice you'll be fine but it keeps that bird submerged that's the, and that's the key to a brine that's why you want it you got to keep it under the water if your turkey's floating up and the breast is all at the top and out of the brine it's not doing its thing it's got to stay submerged that's the thing with so, that brine bucket it has a little screw down screw, like yeah, yeah it keeps that bird down in the water and it, and it works mm-hmm. you could i mean could you do it you could probably put a pan in it put some heavy in it anything to hold it down but you want to keep it under the liquid and choking that bag off and zip and zip tying it up holds it in there too. It can't help but be submerged. Yeah. And yeah, if you're, I wouldn't do that and put it th- just randomly throw it in my in fridge. fridge. <laughs> but if you got it in the brine bucket, yeah, I, you're still gonna have to wash that brine bucket after you do it that way. I've done it. You have to disinfect it and all that good stuff. I'm pretty impressed with that little brine bucket. We hey, pull it out hey, a couple times a year. You know who? who you know who gave me that? Brian Wesson. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Wesson. Yeah. He said, man, you use this? I said, heck yeah, I'll use it. I put it to use every single year. Yeah. I mean, I don't use it all, all year long, but yeah, come just, November, I'm using the brine bucket. Yeah, we store it until we, – we've had it for years. Yeah. It works really good. Um, Any other tips? Before I wrap up, before I let you go, any other tips about cooking turkeys on Thanksgiving? No, I mean, cook to internal temp. That's, I mean – What's the internal temp? 
One, I like 160 in the breast and let it carry over to 165. Do you care what the dark meat's saying? I usually don't even tempt the dark meat, honestly. <laughs> okay. I'm worried about the breast because the dark meat's usually always, always. Cook a cook a 12 to 14 pound bird. This is a big tip. Everybody, I get that question every single year. I'm, I want, got a lot of people I'm feeding. I'm getting a 22 pound turkey. I got a 24 pound turkey. You are not gaining anything buying that bigger turkey. You always say it doesn't taste as good. It don't. Big animals don't taste like I wouldn't taste near as good as Tyler over there. <laughs> He's younger than me. He's gonna be know. fresher. <laughs> that bigger animal is older, tougher, been around longer. It's harder to cook because it's so. I mean, it's the breast is way disproportionate to the the leg quarters. I mean, you're not. It's taking up way more room. It's so easy to cook two twelve pounders versus to cook one twenty four pounder. You're going to yield probably more meat cooking the two 12-pounders. Probably. And they're going to be better. So skip the big birds. You'll see them in the grocery stores. All They've got, they'll have the young. Young tender. Young tender turkeys. And then they'll have them old big toms or whatever they are. I don't know. <laughs> but they're 20-plus pound turkeys, and they're not near as good. Like picking the up The big laminate. ones are probably cheaper. I bet you those are the ones they sell for 19 cents a pound. The big ones? Because they ain't as good. Yeah. it's like buy, the, buy the young tenders. Yeah. It's like picking up women at a bar. You want oh, the young tenders? Yeah. You don't want them old season. I don't know. I like them old season. Ones too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Malcolm, that's about all I have for you today. Well, we're going to come back next week and probably be talking more Thanksgiving, right? Because we, we got one talk. more. We got one more podcast before Thanksgiving, before the day, right? Is that? Am I? Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. We got uh, to talk sides. Is there two more weeks or one more week? It's one more week. Okay. And then the next week is Thanksgiving. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So we're two weeks right now. We're two exactly two weeks. Two away weeks from away Thanksgiving. from Turkey Day. Yeah. We, next week we got to talk sides. We got to talk desserts. Ooh, <laughs> we're getting to the serious rolls. stuff. <laughs> we're getting to the serious stuff next week. Drinks? I don't know. Yeah, I got a good one. Turkey cocktail. What's a good turkey cocktail? Man, bourbon. I tell you what, a fast, easy one. Get you some bourbon. Get you some cranberry juice. Get you a little orange juice and some cranberries to garnish with. Man, it's easy. I've never had that. Yeah, it's super easy. Does a cream? I've never had cranberry and bourbon. I mean, you never had a red snapper? Or you never crown and cranberry? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, yeah. A little Red Bull, maybe? <laughs> It'd be a fighting turkey. It'd be a wild turkey. <laughs> maybe I need to get wild. I don't know. Do I, have a, I may have a bottle of wild turkey at the smokehouse. I'm sure you do. That'd be a good one to make a drink out of for Thanksgiving. We might have to do that next week for a TikTok or something. I've never mixed wild turkey. It's just when it gets to wild to turkey. In college, I called it kick and chicken. <laughs> Man, I drank some wild turkey one night. Bought the 101 Country Classics. So like, or I got you know how they give away credit cards at the student unions. I signed right up. Got me a T-shirt and Discover card. Got to drinking wild turkey and ordered the 101 Country Classics on an infomercial. <laughs> yeah, <for> infomercial. <laughs> they sent it to us like a ten disc set or whatever. So like great. you were sitting at home drinking wild turkey, watching the infomercial. Yeah, yeah. I remember I when we got it. it. Well, we hit the road, we hit the back roads, and listened to every, all ten of them. I don't think we made it through all ten of them. How many CDs was it? It's like ten. I think I still. I think I. Well, the dad still has that set. I don't know how I kept it. What an 80s thing, dude. Uh, that's, that's not 80s. Man, that was, was late early, 90s. That's early 2000s. It was like 96. Oh, really? Yeah, 95. No, yeah, 96. It was 96. It was, it was actually it How old do you it was 96. think we are? I was just kidding. Yeah, you think we are. Were you born in 96, Tyler? 97. Okay. Yeah, this was before you was born, man. I mean, I remember like when I was a kid, they had like the now, that's what you call music or whatever. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was Freedom Rock. Hey, man, is that Freedom Rock? Well, turn it up. It was kind of one of those deals, except this was 101 Country Classics. I need to bring I need to see if I still got that at my dad's house. It's like, I remember it coming in this little square box thing. Collector's 10. It, it didn't have a collector's 10. That was the time life one. I don't know who did this one, but anyway. Thank you all for listening today. <laughs> Tyler, is there anything you'd like to? Make sure you all head on over to the let's get to cooking community i know we talk about it a lot here we get a lot of our questions from there guys we share lots of recipes we're in the comments all weekend long it's facebook.com forward slash group forward slash h2q community we have that giveaway go until uh november 14th yeah get signed up for that giveaway we're gonna do another christmas one so if you don't win this one you have another chance to win something in christmas time and i, I hear a little birdie's telling me we might 
be uh, including some Blue Plate stuff in on that. So you can figure out the logistics of that. So. I'm going to enter that one. <laughs> yeah, shall be on that one. There's be like 20 comments from <laughs> Is it, it going to be like a gold spoon or something? <laughs> <laughs> We're missing the boat. Shell's mayo spoon. mayo spoon. Official mayonnaise spoon. I'll make a little rack for it special in the kitchen. Right. Um, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. All right. Well, we will see y'all next week. We gone.